time to try them out. Unless the sports book is offering something like this. I think you should match the switch. Make the switch. I'm sorry. I never heard of a sports book doing a freebie like this. And I doubt it will ever happen again. These guys are trustworthy. They're fast. They're helpful. So I know they're good for it. I'll tell you what. Log on to my bookie right now. Use promo code CHURCH and get 50% deposit bonus. That's promo code CHURCH. You don't need a promo code for the free, for the turkey free play. If you lose, we'll credit the money back into your account automatically. So what the hell are you waiting for? Listen, this only happens in my bookie and this only happens because you got enough for Joey. Number two, I don't know if you know this, it's Black Friday. That means somebody's gonna kick What's the name? Kellen Megan in the stomach. Who's the chick that did blackface? Oh, Megan Kelly. Megan Kelly's gonna get kicked in the stomach <laughs> on Black Friday. Some black guy's gonna show up with a big black dick and jerk off on a little face. He's gonna be petrified. He's gonna be jealous. Like Jamie Lee Curtis in fucking Halloween. <laughs> you ever shoot a look in the chick's face and they look at you all weird after they're like, they don't want to talk to you for an hour like something bad happened. It's Black Friday, bitch. It's that time of the year again. On it, Black Friday, say. <laughs> Start Thanksgiving night, the 22nd. On it makes a sale of the year and they'll deliver with the deepest discounts of all year. You ready for this? 25% on supplements, 18% on fitness, including Star Wars and Marvel, and certifications, 20% on foods, 50% off DVDs and books, and 30% off apparel. In addition to that, they're going to have massive price cuts. So go to audit.com, Black Friday slash church, and get your party started. And that even includes Alpha Frame. So fuck it, you can start the year off with a new frame of mind, you know what I'm saying? You didn't want a finger banger, but now, on it, made you fucking come to your senses, and you're finger banging bitches that you get chlamydia on your finger. <laughs> Who gives a fuck, Jack? Kick that mule, Lee, it's Monday, the 19th of November. Black Friday, Black Friday,
was showing up in a fucking uh, 83 Winnebago. In an 83 <laughs> Winnebago with a fucking replacement flat tire. Yeah. That's just getting you there. After yeah. that, you don't know what's going to happen. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Using the you stove might bump into a, a room full of cocksuckers <laughs> and have a problem for a week. You don't know. You really don't know. What is a life? gamble? What's what a fucking gamble? gamble to put like in, your life into? Dude, especially back then, man. You know, you know this. When, when when you tour, when you first start touring, you end up crashing in people's places and on the floor and fucking in bathtubs. Like people, you do a gig, you rarely make any money back then. It's just enough to get you to the next town. Like you barely make gas money to get to the next town, and you end up meeting people, and then they're like, "Hey, you know, uh, if you guys want to crash at my place, you know." It's crazy. Is it not crazy? No, dude, dude, it's and, fucking and, and, crazy. And it's like and people are doing blow, and like people are. It's, it's crazy. like all kinds of insanity going around. Are you and, staying yeah. in the same city more than one night, or is it all one nighters? Uh, it depends. Sometimes, uh, like on this tour we got coming up, we're doing a couple of uh, same city two nights. Uh, but it, it varies. Sometimes we do. Um, oftentimes it's one city, one night, and then after the gig, crew packs up, and then you drive all night, uh, and then wake up in the next in the next town. Yeah. And then back then, I mean, did no fucking crew. Like you're 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 setting up your own shit. You're selling your own merch. You're driving yourself, like taking like turns. You know what I mean? Like driving all night. Um, we have shifts. And shit. Get it fucked up tonight. Yeah. I'm staying sober tonight yeah. to drive. Yeah. It was fucking crazy. Back I remember there. taking the gig. I was living in Seattle. I was just starting to work. I was doing comedy for four years. I took a gig in Alaska. Thank you. Yeah. Alaska. And, you know, it was just a fucking bar. You know, it was just a stage. It was a bar. And it's a the ratio in Alaska. Uh, men to women. Yeah, it's just a stage. This is eight, this is nine.
and chains behind us. Yep. And next thing you know, now you're the second guy in the book. And you're doing that for two years. But you come up with an album. And the album does well. And, you know, it's just such a crime. But then the drummer wants to bring this Chinese girl into the family, Gilbo Oda. <laughs> so now you gotta get rid of him. So now you gotta start a whole new fucking yeah. adventure. That's exactly. But it. you keep going. Yeah. You keep going. And, yep. and, and, and after six months, something happens. The house you paid for, now you can't pay the mortgage. So now you gotta go back into the studio and play the guitar and make believe you wanna hear this idiot sing. Yeah. <laughs> Why you, yeah, that sounds great. I want a more Spanish sound from your sin. And you're there. You want Santana? You want Sid, right? Okay. Exactly. You want Carlos? Go Carlos. You want to call me? I'm Sid. You know, Santana. You know what I'm saying? But it's amazing what the life is. And also, you got a call from that dude. He put an album on. It's number one. And you're the guitar player on the tour. And here you are back again. Now you put together three headed snake. And they're fucking rocking. And now, you know, it's, it's such a fucking dog eat dog. And one day you sit there and you go, I've been doing this for 27 years. These fucking vets go over there for six months. If they got PTSD. <laughs> I definitely got something. I got something. PTSD, STD, or something. I got something. I got something. <laughs> because I've been beat up. Yeah. Like beat up emotionally. <laughs> and even when you get to where you're going, there's more drama. Yeah. Now you got 16 lawyers. Exactly. Now you got 16 lawyers, by the way, you gotta change the lyric of this song because came from like a man. And now you're like, what the fuck? What am I gonna do? It's gonna like came out sharp right <laughs> White Castle. What am I gonna use? It's it never ends. People think like Bruce Springsteen, I guarantee, has a problem with with sure. you know, They've shown three movies about music in the last couple of And each movie had a cop top top. They wanted to do something the record label did not, and they beat them. Ray Charles wanted to do an album. The record label said no. Johnny Cash wanted to do Life of Wilson. The record label said no. And Queen wanted to do Rhapsody. And the people were like, we don't, we don't, we don't get it. Yep. Okay. They said, no. Oh, no. And they, they went and did it. It takes all those steps. And to be just, I'm thankful every day. Yeah, night, like somebody sat next to me, Adam, the talent coordinator at the comedy store on Saturday night. And he said something like, you know, bro, to be 55 and still be coming down here and doing spots, it's fucking great. Yeah. Most guys are going to be like, we're going to go shit. We're going to tap dance and shit, singing songs. <laughs> New York, <laughs> New York. Are you fucking kidding me? It's true, man. I'm here on a Monday morning at 9 a.m. Stone to the gills. Because <laughs> the baby came to bed last night. And I dared, I got a stomach ache. And she was working. She worked the attorney, though. She worked me first. Yeah. <laughs> she, does, she knows how to do it. She, I told her what about attorneys. Yeah. Now you got to have a juke from time to time. You got to lower your standards. You got to start low. So now she comes to me with a belly ache. I got to tell the mother. The mother's telling her no. Yeah. So she's she got it down. With, so I'm a fucking turtle fucking started singing songs at 5.30 in the morning. There's a turtle she's got. It's a singing some fucking songs. I'm having nightmares about fucking... I'm in Thailand in a cave with 12 kids. I'm hearing this turtle. I'm hearing this turtle. Thank God I had a pee. And I said, I might as well stay up. I had some coffee. I could do a couple of bongas. So she has you ask the mom for her? Oh, yeah. She comes to me with the stomach ache and shit. And then she gets a she jumping up and down. And the man's like, I thought you had a stomach like I do. And I, and I always take blue up. I always take jet blue. Yeah. And they give you a little package to go. And mint. And one of the things in the package is those things that you put on. Oh, yeah. And I, I think it's she did that. Yeah, she time? She took it out. She sleeps with Oh, time. she does. So every night she has those fucking Jar Jar Gabor things on. I'm over in the middle of the night, I was sleeping next to a hamburger. <laughs> Wake up, she got fucking things on. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with my life? Okay, I'm getting it together. <laughs> Alma, everything you said, though, is true about uh, the steps. And, you know, it for the past, well, shit, I started doing this 
professionally, if you want to call it that, at about 18, 19. And it was always just fucking blinders for me. Like, I, I, you're exactly right in that. You forget other things. You don't even think about other things because you're just focused on what you love to do and what your, your dream is. And, um, you know, relationships fucking fall apart. Uh, everything just fucking People sort of die. Just, yeah, I mean, and you miss a lot of shit, dude. It's impossible for us to, like, make plans. Because, you know, you think you know, so-and-so, my cousin's getting married or so-and-so's birthday or whatever, and, they, you know, everyone makes all these plans to do shit like that. We can never, we never know where the hell we're going to be at. And for us to get from point A to point B, we know that we've got to do this no matter what, no matter what is happening over here. And it's it's a tough thing. Not everyone understands that shit. And that not everyone will make that sacrifice. You know, well, great fucking excuse, so. You know, yeah. fuck yeah. You have to do it. So, absolutely. I love it. Thank God. <laughs> you. We're getting married Saturday, March 20th. Oh, shit. Uh, fuck. Uh, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> I'm already booked and fucked up. Well, we're having a wedding rehearsal Wednesday, Sunday night at 8. Yeah. Oh, I'll be in a plane. Yeah, I just Sorry. got booked. Fuck. <laughs> You're done. You're in no danger. Yeah. Well, we changed the date. Oh, my God. They got a new date. Yeah. Oh, no. And they can change the date eight times. Exactly. And I changed the date this. And after I got sick, I'm going to <laughs> I don't know what happened. Sinatra got true. sick. <laughs> it's it's hysterical. Like how many fucking things people send. Oh. And you really, really, really feel bad because we travel for a living. So once we get off the road, like we're like, I don't oh, want to no, see no, I love that feeling of saying, I'm going to see how the X for six weeks. Okay, I'm going to have to see Burbank twice. Yeah. All right, yeah, just, I mean, you know what? If, if, even if you left your house at 3 o'clock, boom, it would be right on time.
it seems a bit excessive to other bands, but this band has a lot of shit going on on stage. There's a lot of moving parts that, you know, have to be on fucking, you know, 100%. So this is why we're so traditional, you know, drums, guitar, bass, vocal, band. There's a lot of shit. Yeah, it's fucking everything from the visuals. I mean, everything, everything that we do on stage is just, it's mapped out, planned out, in sync with everything, with the music. The visuals are in sync with the music, the vocals, the shit that's going on behind us, everything is in sync. So that means that whole team has to be on the same page the entire step of the way. So that takes a lot of time, you know, it's a lot of rehearsing. Do you guys ever have nightmares that something's going wrong? Dude, I could, yeah. Past two nights, I could not fucking sleep to save my life. Past two nights, uh, to, yeah. So I guess to, last night was like the second night in a row that I actually fucking got sleep because I was thinking about everything that I had to go through in my head and shit. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah. Yeah, That's sometimes, yeah. He's it, it, getting sleep. It gets in your head. I can't imagine. First off, when I got into comedy, first 10 years, it was seven nights a week for me, you know, it was something that, rough, it was just another fucking day, yeah, um, I woke up in the morning, the first day I woke up out was, where was I getting on stage, number two, was I was going to get 40 dollars for half a grand, that was the truth, that was my right day, did you start in New York, I started in Denver, Like when you're an opener, you just know you're gonna get shit on. You know that people are gonna. You 
even if you're good, like it, it just seems to be it, it to me almost like that whole paying your dues thing in a weird way. I don't know why that is, but that's what it's been like. I yeah. mean, when we were openers, I mean, I remember it. I remember shit on. I remember fucking. I remember fucking getting scissors thrown at. Dude, I was. <laughs> dude, I had fucking in Philly. I had fucking scissors fly right by my head Jeez. when we were the openers. I've been burned with like lit cigarettes and shit. Like, yeah, it just you know why? You know, it's just but it seems to be like that with with openers. Yeah. Never <laughs>
Central had a fucking at least getting something out of them. Old McDonald had a farm. Anything is better than what the fuck they're playing up there. It's true. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of shitty acts, and but you know, I, I I'm the same way in the sense that I always give people respect, and I, dude, I never once. Even in today's age of, like, the internet and shit like that, like, I'm not one of those to fucking go on and talk shit about this band because I don't like this guy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, how that happens nowadays and shit like that. Like, dude, I've never... If I don't like them, I don't like them. Like, that's it. It ends there. Like, I'm not gonna... What am I gonna do? You know what I mean? Or, or just, let alone fucking, fucking... red. Yeah, let alone, like, throw shit mm-hmm. at people or, or do stuff. I remember uh, one of the early tours when we were out with Twisted, and we were opening up. The whole fucking floor would turn around and just have a middle finger at us, just flipping us off. Jesus. Our entire set. Like, imagine walking out, just because you're the opener, it would just turn around and just be standing like this. Like, well, and you're playing, you're up there doing your thing, and, and that's all you're looking at is all these fucking middle fingers at you. It's fucking brutal. It's not as early fucking tours, you know. I remember the, uh, for first tour that we did together, which was like almost 20 years ago or whatever, I witnessed like this dude's band get totally shit on by one of the other bands that, that we were all touring with and stuff, and that was like on a nightly basis, that almost, that was fucking real. So we were like the, we were, it was a three, those three, three band three builds. We were the, at the time, I was in the first band, the opening band, and then you guys were the second. Whoa! And then there was the Whoa! Band. Every, every chance they could, load up. tried to fucking keep our money, tried to just, it, just everything. And we were pretty green back then. We didn't know all the shit. And, you know, you get taken advantage of and all that crap. But, uh, yeah, it was fucking, those were crazy days, man. Really? That's when we were traveling in a fucking Ford right Explorer. Here. Six guys. Six guys across country, across the U.S., several times over in a Ford oh, Explorer. Oh, shit, no, he's down here. Are there six seats in a Ford Explorer? No. No. I'm do the math in my head. I was like, did he think it would make place in the back? So yeah. there's five seats in a place in the back. You have to lug it. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. Yeah. To thump it. So you're back there, grappled up. You yep. You need 15 chiropractors. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You have to stop at 18 to say as far as it don't give hand jumps. Just to straighten up and fucking play the drugs. Pretty much, it's, man. It's, it's, it's a fucking nightmare. It's cool. Yeah. I lived in an office in Seattle. 125 a month, just like this. Lived in this office. No shower. They had a shitter. And, you know, the gym was like the YMCA two blocks from here. Mm-hmm. So if I wanted a shower, I would have to walk in there in the pretense I was going to work out. And they had Q-tips in those days. It was like, a, it wasn't a Y. Yeah. It was a little nice to have blow dryers and showers. <laughs> and I, I go in there, you know what I'm saying? Toilet paper was soft. They had towels on the fucking. So I lived in the office when I showered in the dish. It made me forced to work out. It made me in the back for an hour. It made me on the bike and the weights. And then I would go on the gym. It could be done. You know, the, the sacrifices that you put into it. They don't even feel like sacrifices while you're doing it. Like if you look back. You don't feel like sacrifices. Mm-hmm. It was like you were doing it the same reason why somebody would join the bullshit. You know, they have a belief in something they believe in. The U.S. is evil. That's not a militia. And, and you have that belief. You rely on the facts. Yeah. Don't believe. Yeah. I've been astonished. For the last year, my life. The question is what makes you go forward in this career at the 40 years.
Dante's stay in contact. Yeah. Most of my phone cards used to kill me. Though. Fucking ripped you off. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you went to a Kroger. Dude, those were scams. Those were bodega ones. Yeah. Were fucking scam. Yeah. Things. Yeah. And they would say 10,000 minutes or whatever. You're lucky if you get a fucking half a yeah. phone call out of it. Dude, yeah. every call is four minutes. <laughs> even if the person don't pick up. Yes. You're like, Just what's the dialing with it? He would hit the answer machine. That's 36 minutes. I just had 40 fucking minutes. Don't be talking to nobody. You muddle as fuck. Dude, I remember, I remember, I remember back then, like, um, we played a show in Cleveland. And uh, we ended up, it was one of those classic things where you end up staying at a friend's house like right after the show. So I go, hey, I'm going to make a phone call. I'm going to call my, my girl at the time or whatever. I had a phone call. I had a phone call. He goes, dude, don't, don't walk like anywhere around here. And I was like, how bad could, how bad it could be? Cleveland. Yeah. It's, it's one in the morning, two in the morning. I'm just going to make a phone call. I'm at, I'm at this like uh, little tienda at the corner, right? And I'm on, uh, I'm on a payphone, and sure enough, within like two minutes, people started throwing fucking bottles, They're driving by, throwing bottles at me while I'm on the phone. I was like, I, I, I bet, I better go. <laughs> Bad idea. You have one minute. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah. Jesus you better go, dude. Yeah. Uh, the road, the road is an interesting place. You learn. I said it for a couple months ago on the podcast. Once you put yourself out into the universe.
last night to midnight, I woke up my body here and I said, look at that fat joke right before a little special. She sticks her toes in my ass. And then she moves her knees. Yeah. And she purposely sticks her toes in my ass. Now I can dial 911. <laughs> send her to jail. Oh, well, it's a big deal. You know what I'm saying? She feels me out. She pulls my underwear down the back. She rubs my ass. She pulls my hand. Me on these down halfway. Nice. And she rubs my back and my ass cheeks sometimes. I, and she gets close to my asshole. Yeah. That's part of the Chinese culture. They want to stick a finger up your ass to loosen you up. I wouldn't dial 911. I just hope my, my asshole wouldn't be dirty. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be walking around with human stink finger on it. The rest and of the day. Rub, and then rub it on somebody's neck. <laughs> and then Lee walks in. And then walk around. Like, you mean, probably there once and didn't tell me. You just told me to bring shorts. <laughs> I took it for one time. It's tremendous for $40. Did you like it, Lee? It was good, but it was, good. it was interesting doing it next to him because I could hear him. And then... And my guy was going kind of hard on me, but I know I couldn't say anything because he would have tortured me. And then we f like we fell asleep outside getting the feet done because they do the feet. And I didn't think I was going to be into it, especially because it was a guy, but it felt good. Did uh, any did anyone stick their toes in your ass? No, no. The, luckily, no, the guy I get it. I always get them. Yeah. My name is Jesse. I always get. I call first. And then was Jesse available? She tell me. She tell me exactly when to get there. I stop what I'm doing, I shoot right over there. I go there like twice a month. I fucking dip a heavy, and she's phenomenal. Wow. She rips my shoulders apart. Damn. She rips my feet apart. They got a lunchtime special. From 12 to 3, you go in there, give them a 20. You give that little Chinese guy a 5 before the party even starts. Yeah. <laughs>
get a fucking, I have a degenerative disc, and it just, it acts up, flares up from time to time. I also can't sit, you know, for um, uh, very long, because when I feel that pressure, just yeah. like a, getting right in there. So when you look down at the computer, yeah. that adds to the pressure. Like yeah. Every time you get to a yeah. notice, something read me the right answer to me. just like, no, I'm wow. bad. No, I'm bad. Yeah, I did. It's different. Uh, <laughs> one thing about you that I really like, that every musician should do, I mean, uh, Big Jack and Weeks. He's Big Jack. One of the Weeks is Wow. 